expired. Want some free medical advice? Don't mess around with expired drugs. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I thought that was a, just a scam to get you to buy more. Well, you also thought putting eggs, bacon, and sausage in a booze ravaged stomach would solve problems instead of creating new ones. You sure you're okay? No, I'm not. Massive hangover, remember? I've, I've seen you hungover. This is something else. Look, Britt, if, if, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. I mean, if not, that's cool too. It's less desirable, but it's cool. I have a lot of work to do. All right, uh, well, I'll leave you to it. See you later. I'm, I'm free for dinner tonight. Can't wait. Oh, come in. Hey, should I come back? No, no, come, come in. Is this about the necklace? I hope so. Maybe I should stick around, considering it was my father's, and now maybe it's mine. Actually, Cody, I can't discuss anything in front of you without Britt's permission. Oh, permission granted. Cody is right. This does concern him. That's... It's not gonna be a problem with you, is it, Sam? No. Never my client once. All right, I'm gonna forward you this to make it easier, okay? I uncovered some documentation from Tobbs Estate. He had an itemized list of his jewelry collection drawn up to be included in his will. It included a ruby and diamond necklace matching the description from the one from Peter's safe deposit box. Okay, what, is, what does this mean? Well, it means more likely than not, the necklace belongs to Cody. So, Paisan or Peter stole the necklace? No, not necessarily. But, I mean, you said that I said that the documentation that I found proves that the necklace was in Top's possession at the time of his death, but it doesn't rule out that Faison could have purchased it from the estate. But I mean, wouldn't there be a record of that sale? It's <laughs> it's worth 35 million. Well, there may be evidence of a third party legally selling the necklace. I just haven't found it yet. But it's more likely that the necklace, along with the rest of Top's collection, was left to any heirs that he may have had. And that's me. If there are no other heirs. Oh, well, here I thought I was getting a windfall when we found that necklace, but turns out it might all be yours. No, again, not necessarily. If a sales record to Peter or Faison shows up, it could wind up being yours after all. Hi, pardon me. Dr. Westmoreland, I need a consult. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what else might I need to know? I know why you coerced Spinelli into matching you with Britt. It's the necklace. That's what you've been after all along, isn't it? How could I have known about the necklace? Cody, stop. I've run dozens of cons more complicated than this one. I'm not running a con. You could have known about the necklace when you found out that you might be Tob's son. Okay, look, I get that you don't trust me because I blackmailed your friend. I'd but... say that's a pretty good reason. And I apologized for it. And I told you I'd leave Spinelli alone. Good. I told you you better. <sighs> Come on, Sam. We used to be friends. Cody, we are not friends. You're Dante's friend, and I gave you the benefit of the doubt because of that. You are raising major red flags right now. Well, why? Why? Because I'm interested in a one-of-a-kind necklace that may have belonged to my long-lost father? What's wrong with that? When said necklace turns up in a safe deposit box that belongs to Brit, that seems pretty convenient, don't you think? And then you use blackmail to be paired with her. I don't know. That certainly seems like an agenda. Well, no one's squeaky clean. I'm not, you're not, and not even Dante. 